We're going to demonstrate today how the direct impingement system works in an AR-15 carbine. And this is a Wyndham Weaponry MPC to use for the demonstration. And we're going to see how the bolt works, how the gas system works, and also the recoil system. First thing we're going to do is double check to make sure that the gun is unloaded. We're going to remove the upper receiver from the lower receiver. Next, we're going to remove the bolt from the upper receiver. Now, this is the bolt carrier group. The bolt is right here on the front. Here, the bolt carrier is this area right in here. To demonstrate the action of your bolt carrier group with your lower receiver and what initially happens when you charge your magazine, we're going to take this lower. We have a dummy round in a little 10 round Magpul magazine. Your charging handle fits like so right on your gas key. As you pull your charging handle back to load around into the magazine, your bolt actually goes into your buffer tube and your hammer is depressed down. Now as the bolt moves forward, it actually brings this round out of the magazine, connects to the bolt face, and then moves into the chamber. As the bolt moves forward in the upper receiver, here you can see the dummy round in the bolt. Now, I'm having to hold it down with a pin because the ejector pushes it outward. So, as it goes in, it enters the chamber, and then it slides into place, and then locks. If you ever find the bolt not fully closed onto the chamber, the forward assist actually pushes, and it pushes against these teeth, and that's what these ridges are for right here. It actually pushes them forward and locks it into the chamber. Now I've removed the top hand guard so you can see the gas tube and how this works. Once the round is fired in the chamber, the bullet travels down through the barrel and all the gas pressure behind it pushes it forward. And when the bullet reaches here, there's a small little port in the barrel. If you take off the front sight, there's a small hole right here. And that hole actually connects with the gas tube. And the gas pushes up and back through the tube. Now your barrel nut here holds your gas tube into place. So once the barrel is attached to the upper receiver and set, you line up your gas tube with your barrel nut. And then of course this comes through and then appears right here. And your gas tube is also protected by your handguard. Now the bullet will continue and exit out of the barrel. But as the gas pressure pushes up and goes through the tube, it'll actually force the barrel into the rear position. Now, as the spent case goes outward, the bolt continues in the rear position. Now here we see the gas tube right here that extends on into the receiver. And it mates with this gas key right here. And as you can see there's a hole. And that gas pushes against this hole. It's very important on your bolt carrier to have your gas key staked in the right manner. And here we can see that it's staked on both sides. And this keeps it from wiggling out because you don't want this to come off. And I've seen a lot of them where they can be very loose. And of course that's going to affect the alignment of your gas tube. With the bolt in the chamber, it actually locks into place and then pushes out and the gas will fire and push this bolt all the way back into the rear position. And this is back through your receiver extension tube. And then we start the process all over again as the bolt comes forward, takes another round out of the magazine, and goes forward into the chamber. And your bolt rests in this position. Of course the round fits into the extractor, and then here's your ejector, and that's actually pushing your round out. So the chamber holds it into place, but once that piece of brass comes out, this is actually spring tension that just flips it out and then sends it out of the ejection port. Now your buffer retaining pin, which is right here, coincides with the groove at the back of the bolt. But also this cutaway in your bolt allows the hammer to move forward and to hit the firing pin here. When the firing pin is hit, it comes out of the bolt face through this hole, and this will ignite your round. Now your receiver extension tube actually has the buffer and the buffer spring. We're going to just take a quick look at that to give you an idea of how that looks and functions. The buffer is weighted, so it actually pushes back and compresses the spring as the bolt comes back, and then springs forward and pushes the bolt back into place. You can get different weights on the plug and the spring, but if you start messing with these too much, you can cause malfunctions. 
The M16 AR-15 direct impingement rifle has been around since 1959 and it's proven itself all around the world with U.S. military forces, with local and federal law enforcement, and it's an extremely popular and best-selling rifle in U.S. civilian markets. It's accurate, it's reliable, and it's fairly affordable for your average shooter. An excellent choice for home defense. And one of my personal favorite rifles. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Pull your charging handle back to load around in the magazine. Okay. Next, we're going to just remove the bolt from the. We're taking an we're taking a Wyndham Weaponry MPC direct impingement carbine, and we're going to take a look at how the direct in. Ah. <sighs>